Hello everyone, welcome to Tower Academic once again. And today's uh, topic is going to be Luo migration into East Africa. Above all, before we move in, I would like to say thank you for the people being part of this uh, channel, being able to subscribe, being able to watch our content and be able to put comments here and there. I remember the last video we had about history, it raised a lot of <laughs> debate, which is amazing. Hopefully this one will not raise debate. Uh, but I've tried to do some good research about it and uh, welcome all the feedback. You can put whatever you wish and uh, comment. Definitely, you know, theories of history differ. That's the fact. They differ. Uh, we can't have the same. And uh, being that uh, this is some bit of ancient history, we didn't have enough kind of uh, documentaries, kind of recording, kind of noting down all the facts about these people. But what we're trying to do is to trace them and use the relevant information that we have. So today, <laughs> we want to look at Luo migration to East Africa. Why am I laughing a little? Because I believe this one also will raise some debate, which is okay. Which is okay because the Bantu question raised the debate. As I got different kind of theories from different kind of people basing on the comments that you put forward, which is okay. And I want to say thank you for that. So... Once again, welcome you to watching this video and above all, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to leave your comment and put a thumbs up, like this comment to support uh, the, the channel as we move on. So allow us dive into the topic today. So who are the Luo? Uh, what are we going to discuss today? Uh, our agenda, what we'll discuss today, we are going to look at who are the Luo? Who are these kind of people? I want to understand who they are, who were. Actually, not who, actually, who were, who they are, because they're still with us. And then we shall look at the Luo people in East Africa, the types, uh, the groups of these people in East Africa. And then we shall also look at the cause of the Luo migration. When you say cause, we mean how do they move from one place to another. So those are the few areas that we want to look at, uh, are basing on our topic today, and that is the Luo people in East Africa. We move on. So we are saying, who are the Luo? Ladies and gentlemen out there, who are the Luo? So basing on what I have here is that uh, the Luo were a major group of the river, lake, nilotics. This people love settling around rivers and lakes. And as we shall see, we have River Nile uh, flowing around this region, as we shall see. So we are saying they had originally settled around the shores of Lake Rudrof and then Behel Gazelle area in the equatorial province, and that is in the areas of southern Sudan, uh, moving up to Sudan, the Khartoum Sudan, the one we know of. So basically the southern Sudan and coming to northern Uganda, that's where we see these kind of people. So they're basically uh, pastoralists, though they practice some, some bit of agriculture. So we are saying they inhabited areas of Egypt, Sudan, southern Sudan, Ethiopia, western Kenya, Mara region of Tanzania, and rivers and lakes, Nilotes were also a group of Nilotes who settled around lakes and rivers. So they moved from Bahel Gazelle in the equatorial province, and their movement spread all over these regions over a long period of time, between 1000 and uh, 1500 AD, as we shall see. So basically this explains who they are. Where do they come from and who they are? So we're saying these are river lake nilotes and they love settling around rivers and lakes and they're believed to have settled in these areas Egypt, Sudan, southern Sudan, in Ethiopia, all the way from Egypt to Sudan to southern Sudan, Ethiopia, western Kenya, northern Uganda, the Maru region in Tanzania. That's the brief about these people. So let's move on and see. Our next area is the Luo people in East Africa. Who are these people? So we are saying we have a group known as the Shiruk Southern Sudan. That's where they are found. And uh, they are found on the banks of River Nile. Then we also have the Anwak. Anwak are also referred to as the Anwa people. And this river around, or oh, they settle around uh, Gambel region. And they speak the Da Anwa language. 
We also have the Paris. Paris. Nice name, Paris. So these are also referred to as the Jo Paris. Wow. So Jo just means people of Paris. So this is set around the equatorial province, and that's in southern Sudan. And they also speak the Jo Paris language. I also have what we call the Acholi. Acholi, Lengonwa. The Acholi people. What's up? What's up? So we have the Acholi. This is a phone in northern Uganda. Uh, that's Uganda. In the districts of Agago, Amuru, Gulu, Ketegum, Nyoya, Lamor, Padel, and Omoro district. They speak a Choli language. We have what we call the Balanda Bow. That's another strong name. Hope I'll pronounce it well. The Balanda Bow. The Balanda Bow are found in southern Sudan and uh, around western Equatorio and western Bahel Gazelle. They speak a language known as the Balanda Bow language. Moving on, we have the Suri. Suri. Suri people. <laughs> They're still Lua people. So these are also found in the southern Sudan. And they're also referred as to they also referred to as the Shati. Hope I've got it right. Shati. S H A D O T Shati. People. So when you say Thuri and also say Shati means the same. They are the same people. Thuri all Shati people. These are found in Southern Sudan and they speak the Thuri language. Wow. The Luo are such a diverse ethnic group. Amazing, amazing. We have also the Luo. Luo. This is L U W O. Luo. These are also found in the southern Sudan. Uh, the Luo, uh, also called the Ja. Jal Choi. J U R C H O I. And the Luo of Behel Gazelle. They're also the Nilotic group. This was found in western parts of southern Sudan. They're part of the large group of the Ethore linguistic related to the Luo people of East Africa. They speak the Jol language. Jol. J-U-R. I hope I've got it correct. Jeru, which is a northern Luo language. Lastly, we have the Jalu. Jalu. We said the Joluo, Joluo, Joys, people and people of the Luo. So we're saying the Jaluo, uh, these are found in Kenya and Tanzania. The Jaluo, also referred as the Janangi, meaning the monkey's hairs. Those who remember the history of the monkey, uh, how they moved, uh, the history of GPD. And the bongo, it's so much pronounced in this in this ethnic group. And then the, the people who led them to the to, to movement. And uh, this group was led by the Namogi. So we are looking at this group that is believed to have actually settled present day. It's Kenya and Tanzania and the Mar region of Tanzania. And they speak Jaluo, Luo language. So briefly, those are the people, or those are the Luo people in East Africa. Luo is a big ethnic group, but within the Luo ethnic group, we have different people in this ethnic group. And these are the ones we have just seen. We've said the Shiruku, the Nwak, the Pari, the Achori, Balandabo, the Thuri, the Jaluo, and the Luo. These all fall under the Luo group of people. Moving on. Right about now, we want to see the Luo migration. The course, how they move from one place to another, step by step. We are saying, they settled East Africa through northern Uganda around Nimuli, the Sudan. And as we have said, their movement was gradual and slow and I believe to have originated from Bahel Gazelle, 
settled around shores of Lake Rudrov and Bahelga areas in the equatorial province and that's found in southern Sudan above. So we are saying their movement is slow and gradual and they entered East Africa and they entered East Africa through Nimule, northern Uganda and Nimule region that is in in southern Sudan. They settled at Pubungu between 14500 and 1500. Pubungu later became their major dispersed point where they started moving out to different parts of uh, East Africa. So we're saying this became their dispersed point uh, where they spread different directions. One group under Gipiri and Tiful moved west into West Nile. They intermarried with Sudanic, Madi, Okebo, and the Lendu, giving rise to Alul people. Have I gone too fast? Okay. We are saying, how did they enter East Africa? They entered East Africa through northern Uganda, around the Modi region. And settled at Pubungu between 1450 and 1500. Pubungu later became a point where they started moving to different parts of East Africa. It became a dispersed kind of point. Different families started moving to different places from where they settled to different and moved to different elections. So we're saying one group under Gipiri. And the Tifol moved west into West Nile. They intermarried with Sudanic, Madi, Okebo, and Lendu people, giving rise to a rule. That's the first wave of their migration. Because we're looking at migration. How do they move from one place to another? Moving on. The Japito. The Jabindo, not Bindo, Bito. The Jo Bito. Jo Bito clan moved southwards into Pawir, also referred as to Chope. They established the Luo Bito dynasty at the time when Bunyoro Kitara was disintegrating. Those who have studied history very well of West Africa understand this. Where we see Luo Bito dynasty growing so much in western part of Uganda. And that's the Bunyoro region. They also set up sub-dynasties in Buganda, Busoga and Bukedi. What a big, big ethnic group. So we see this group establishing the Luo Bito dynasty in Western Uganda. They also set up, uh, uh, the father migrated under Labong Okad northeast was to present the Achori region. So that's what we see the Achori now. So the father migrated under Labongo and uh, northern east was present day Achori land. Next. We are saying some Luo settled in Budama, present day Tororo, under Adola, and became the Japadola. Japadola. While others continue to Lamogi, Lamonji Hills in Western Kenya, Lamonji Hills in Western Kenya. So we are saying. Others settled in Budama, present day Tororo, under a dollar, and became the Jokpa dollar. While others continue to Ramoji hills in Western Kenya, they were often victims of the Maasai Banyode raids. Between 1590 to 1670, the Jock Owin, also referred to as the Jock Roth, 
led by fierceless Owin Singoma moved from Sudan through northern Uganda and finally settled in northern Nyanza province. Are we moving on together? Next, this is the last group actually. We're saying the Jok Omoro moved from northern Bunyoro through Busoga, Budama, and settled in Nyanza province in western Kenya. The Abasuba group of refugees from Sese Islands, Busoga, Bugwere, migrated into Kivrondo Gulf and southern Nyanza between 1600 and 1800. I guess you see how this movement occurred. And basing and looking at these maps that we have just seen previously, you can see their movement. Right about now, you, we are looking at the Shiruku and Nyanyaku people down to Acholi following River Nile, as you can see in that map right there. And then moving on, we are saying, looking at this one, you can see how the Luo migrated using the green arrows into Kenya. Lodwo area to Kisum and Aldrich around those regions. So briefly, this explains the Luo migration and who the Luo are and the type and groups of Luo people in East Africa. I want to say thank you and uh, thank you for being part of this lesson and thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and above all, Press that button so that you're notified every time we upload a new video, a new education video. And uh, all your comments are welcome. Let me hear from you. What do you think? Who are the Luo? Where do they come from? Do you have a different theory about these people? I welcome your comments. See you next. Thank you.